Hey folks, have you ever needed to run a Postgres database in Google Cloud, but you didn't want to spend any money on it? Well, if you've gone into Cloud SQL and set up a small database, you know that even the smallest one costs around 10 bucks a month or so. Well, there is a way you can run a Postgres database in GCP without spending any money, and that's by setting up a virtual machine using Compute Engine that falls in Google's free tier. So I'm going to show you how you can set up the server, and then we're going to run the database using my favorite tool, Docker. But I do want to point out that this is not a good idea for anything in production. You should really only be doing this for development projects and small proof of concepts. This is a very small virtual machine and you're going to hit hardware limits pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. So using Compute Engine, you can get one server for free per month, but it has to fit into very specific criteria. It needs to be an E2 micro instance. It needs to be in one of these three regions. It has to be 30 gigabytes or less of standard persistent disk. This is very important because this is not the default selection when you set up the hard drive. I also want to point out that in this free tier, it's one instance per month of runtime. And what that means is if you had this instance running 24 seven for a full month and it fit these criteria, it would still be free. What that also means is if you ran three of these instances for only seven or eight hours a day, those would still be free. So when you initially set this up, it's actually gonna show you that it does cost a little bit of money. And that's just because it's based off of uh, if it's running or not. And so it's really up to you to manage that and make sure you don't run this too long or run too many of these. So let's go ahead and jump into Google Cloud and get this set up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our firewall and we're gonna set up a rule that allows traffic to come in on TCP port 5432 as that's the default port that Postgres uses. So go to VPC network and then go to firewall. And then we want to create a firewall rule. I'm gonna call mine allow Postgres. Description is allows Postgres on port 5432. Go ahead and choose the network. Uh, mine is default because I don't have another one set up in this project. You can leave the priority that 1000 or you can increase it or decrease it if you'd like. Direction of traffic is ingress. Action is allow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up so that we allow traffic to specific instances that have a tag on it. So for the tag, you can name this whatever you want, but you should name it something that makes sense to you. And so I'm gonna call it allow TCP 5432. And for the source IP range, you want it to be 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which basically means you're going to allow traffic from any IP. Now, if you always know what your IP is going to be and you only want to allow connections from that one IP or an IP range, then you need to change this and not leave it as 000. So we're going to specify ports and we're going to only allow TCP 5432. And that's it. So go ahead and hit create. So now you can see here that rule is created. And so now our network is all ready to go. So now we can go and create the actual VM. So let's head over to Compute Engine. We want to create a new instance. You can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine Postgres DB. You need to make sure that this region matches one of the regions in the free tier. So go check the documentation if you're not watching this video. As soon as it comes out, those may change. So make sure you check that documentation. I'll put a link in the description down below. So I'll leave my region as US Central 1. For a machine type, series is E2. We wanna change the size to E2 micro. And then we'll scroll down and we need to make a change on the boot disk. So go ahead and click change. I'm gonna leave my OS as Debian. Feel free to change this if you want. The instructions that I show in a little bit later will be a little bit different if you don't choose Debian. So just keep that in mind. What we need to do is change the boot disk. It has to be standard persistent disk. Otherwise it won't fall inside that free tier. Size has to be less than 30 gigs. I'm gonna go ahead and change mine to 20 and then hit select. And we're all done with that boot disk. So now let's go down and we're going to expand advanced options and then networking. And this is where you need to add that tag that we added to our firewall rule. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the name that I used, which was allow Postgres. And so that's all we have to do to create the VM. So scroll down and click create, wait for that to finish. So now that that setup is complete, we need to SSH into this server and set up Docker engine. Setting up Docker engine will allow us to run a Docker container in this server that hosts our Postgres database. Now, if you want to just install Postgres directly on the server, that's you can definitely do that. I just like using Docker because it makes it easier to pull the image uh, and just start it with one quick command and you're ready to go. So I'll put a link in the description down below with this information. This is Docker's documentation on how to install the engine. And there's a couple of ways to do it, but the way I'm gonna show really quick is to set it up using this repository. So there's a few commands we need to run. So let's go ahead and SSH into the server and get started. So go into your VM list, click connect on SSH. 
So once that's finished connecting, we're going to run those commands that are in that documentation. So the first command we're going to run is sudo apt get update. That just makes sure that our server's up to date. And then the next command is this install, which installs a couple packages for us. And then once that's completed, we run the next one. And then this last one, finally, to set up the repository. We've set up these repositories so that when we run these next install commands, the, the APT installer is going to know where to go get these packages from. So we're going to run sudo apt get update one more time. And then lastly, we're going to install Docker and all of its dependencies. Go ahead and put in Y for yes, so it will install. This may take a few minutes. All right, now that that's complete, uh, they do have a test in here. You can run this uh, Docker run hello world command. It'll tell you if this message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. So that's good. We're all set up and ready to go. So now that Docker engine is installed, we can set up Postgres. So we're gonna pull the Postgres image and we're going to run it as a container and then we can connect and start using our database. So I'm going to set this up pretty quickly. I have done a video in the past about running Postgres inside of a Docker container. If you're interested in watching that and you have questions about some of these things I'm gonna do here next, you can go up here and go watch that video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the latest version of Postgres. So that command is sudo docker pull Postgres. And then lastly, we need to tell Docker to actually run that image as a container so that we can start using it. So here's that command. It's docker run. The password to log in will be best password ever. And then next I'm gonna pass in a volume. I'm gonna actually just use what's called a named volume. So I don't care where this data lives on the host. All I care is that Docker manages it and doesn't lose it. So the name of that volume will be called Postgres. And then this is the location inside the container where Postgres is gonna keep that database information. Then we're going to tell it we want to run on port 5432 inside and outside of the host. We're gonna run it in detached mode. And then finally we'll give it the name of the image. So we'll go ahead and run that. And if that works correctly, it will give you the ID of the Docker container. And so now our database is all set up and ready to go. So if you wanna log into it and test it. All right, so I'll go ahead and connect to this really quick. I am using Azure Data Studio to do this. So new connection, change it to Postgres. Now in this server name, this is going to be the external IP address of your virtual machine in Compute Engine. So if you go back into the Google Cloud Console, in the list of your VMs, you'll have an internal IP address and an external IP address. So go ahead and copy that external IP address, and that's what you're gonna use for the server name. Username by default is Postgres. The password is the password you used in your Docker run command. So mine was best password ever. And one last step that I always forget, I actually did just forget this, you need to specify that it's going to connect on port 5432. So in Azure Data Studio, you need to click Advanced right here, and you need to specify the port, 5432. Go ahead and click OK, and then Connect. So I just realized I made a mistake. Um, when I set up the VM, I used the name of my rule, not the actual target tag that I put in as the name of the target tag. So I'm gonna go fix that. So I'm gonna go back into my Postgres database. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to go down to Network. I'm going to remove that network tag. I'm going to put in the correct one and then save that. Now I can go back to Azure Data Studio and connect. And now it's connecting like it's supposed to. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I do wanna emphasize one more time that this is not something that you should be using for a production database or anything that is very important. It's really just for uh, small dev projects and proof of concepts. But if you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. If you did enjoy it, let me know why down below. If I screwed something up, let me know. And thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.